hello everybody now i'll discuss the remaining part of the uh, casting process because we have already discussed the different aspect of the casting process so one of the important aspect of casting process is the superheating of the uh, material molten material so uh, it is very important properties because we can make a, a count of the how much time it will require to reach the mold cavity such that we can assume that at this particular point of time the material should remain in the liquid phase such that it will be able to fill each and every corner points of the uh, mold cavity. So that's why pouring temperature is very important and it's also having we can see that this pouring temperature if it too much of superheating is there for the uh, liquid metal then there is another possibility problem is there the entrapment of the uh, gases surrounding atmospheric gases can be a problem and that will try to create some kind of the defects associated with the casting process. So here for uh, we can see that uh, uh, this co two contradicting aspect and we see we always try to look into what are the measurement of the fluidity of the liquid metal because based on that we can say how quickly or how efficiently it can fill the mold cavity. So it's a simple measure of this thing the metal to ability to flow of the uh, to flow within the mold cavity known as the fluidity but we can check the fluidity of the particular material here is a simple example of the pouring cap or through which uh, tapered sprue is there and we can put the liquid metal from the top and we can see count the flow of the liquid metal through this channel uh, we can see the which is on the base basically and up to certain point it will start when the its temperature will super temperature reach of the liquid metal to close to the the solidification temperature and start solidifying that means start changing the phase from liquid to solid phase. So here you can make a count of the time that up to which distance it can move and with a certain velocity and based on that we say that the what is the fluidity of this particular liquid metal. So that is why the fluidity is one important uh, properties associated with the uh, casting process. But before discussion of the fluidity of the casting process, we need to understand that when there is a change of the phase of the liquid matter from uh, liquid phase to the solid phase, this differs depending upon the whether we are handling the pure metal or we are handling the alloy. So alloy solidification and pure metal, these are the, the range of the solidification temperature is actually different. We see the melting point of the pure metal is more or less constant one single temperature and it takes some time to change the phase from liquid phase to solid phase and that typically known as the cooling curve of a particular uh, material. So if you see the right hand side figure also here you see there is a when it is an alloy system then it, there is a it uh, the solidification does not occurs over a not a single temperature. So rather the solidification occurs over a range of the temperature that range of the temperature is known as the between the liquidus temperature and the solidus temperature. So solidification start at the liquidus temperature and solidification ends at the uh, solidus temperature and that is we say this is a very ideal situation for under equilibrium solidification conditions. So this is the uh, another cooling curve associated with the alloy system. So we can easily distinguish the cooling curve between the pure metal and cooling curve of an, an alloy system. Now other aspect also and in a casting process when you try to um, overall analyze the cooling curve there are different phase associated with the cooling curve here yeah, we can understand graphically that uh, during the, the looking into the time versus temperature diagram here we represent the different uh, aspect of the cooling curve. So first we start with the pouring temperature pouring temperature means uh, it is having some kind of the super heat and this is the starting point is from this point so this is the pouring temperature of the liquid metal now this liquid metal uh, eating and now when it, uh, liquid metal is poured into the mold cavity when you start the solidification solidification is actually start this point and but before that this amount of temperature between this the pouring temperature this is known as the superheat temperature. So uh, superheat temperature so some superheat temperature is actually required not exactly the liquid metal exactly close to the uh, melting point of the material but rather some superheating temperature is also required because it lapses some time to start the solidification process. So in between we can practically carry the liquid metal from one place to another place. So that is why some superheating temperature is basically required associated with the casting process. So this temperature is the superheating temperature. Now when it is reaching from the pouring temperature to the solidification temperature that which temperature solidification starts. This is known as the this uh, cooling phase but this cooling the slope of the this curve represents at any point that indicate the 
cooling rate. So if we measure the slope of this curve, it actually indicating it indicates the uh, cooling rate uh, during this cooling process. Now the start solidification actually starts from this point and it's, it ends at this point and such that after that further cooling is try to reach the, the ambient temperature. So therefore, we can say that this is the local solidification time just to change from uh, the solidification start just to ch start changing from liquid phase to solid phase. So this time span is known as the local solidification time but if we count from the pouring temperature we take this as a reference with respect to it we can say this is the total solidification time and this when the local solidification time if you see observe the local solidification time it actually when you count it it occurs over a constant temperature that constant temperature which is true in case of the, the pure metal. And of course, this is also called the equilibrium freezing temperature. That means one single temperature, equilibrium temperature, the solidification occurs, which is change the phase from uh, liquid phase to solid phase. And further, uh, from this point, gradually it cool, cool to the ambient temperature and gradually. So this is the typical cooling curve or time temperature curve associated with the uh, in, in a casting process. And now look into other distinguished aspect of the casting process that is for the design of the core. First, it is also necessary to understand the where is the utilization of the core. Core is in the sand wall casting process. Core is actually used and the within the liquid metal and the CPU you want to create any kind of the hollow section and uh, in that cases we need to put some kind of the uh, core inside the mold cavity. So suppose this is the core. So here we assume this is the core and other are other parts of the casting system is that one is that pouring basin is there, then sprue is there, then runner is there, up through the runner it enters the mold cavity and at the one side it is there, the riser is also there and this is the course is the, uh, uh, um, this is the, the solid comp part which is basically final in a final component it will create the hollow part of the actual casting process. Now uh, this is the, this is course and we see that from this figure that when is molten metal is poured from the top it is passes through the sprue that we have already discussed and it is passes through the runner and it enters the mold cavity and riser is there because if there is when there is a solidification occurs within this uh, this mold cavity so some shrinkage will definitely occur because shrinkage will overall shrinkage will be maybe considerable when there is a change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. So to compensate that sinkage volume, the riser is actually placed here. So riser is supply the liquid metal which is basically compensate the sinkage volume in the uh, mold cavity. So these are the all prospect but here the focus is on the core. Now when core is there, so when liquid metal enter from the top and liquid metal enter from the bottom. So definitely there is a it is subjected to some liquid metal pressure. So core should be hard enough be able to sustain with the that it or it will not it should not collapse with the, appli with the application of the the um, pressure created by the liquid metal within the mold cavity we can count we can calculate what is the pressure can be created by this mold cavity uh, on the on the core so basically core can be core sand so we make uh, it can be made of the sand so usually clay free silica sand we use for the making the core so but binders can be different types of the oil um, that core oil, resin, dextrin, these are the different kind of the uh, binding agent is added with the sand and then it is created kind of very close to the cylindrical type of the structure, the, uh, the solid structure that is placed inside the mold cavity. Now, this core is subjected to some kind of the buoyancy force associated with these things. Now, here you can see that we know that how to calculate the buoyancy force is a subjected to, uh, to this core is the uh, net bind supports application what is the weight of the liquid metal which is actually displaced by the core so we have to calculate weight of the liquid metal which is equivalent to the volume of the uh, of the core so that is that can be count as a this uh, volume uh, v and v is the volume of the core and g and rho so rho g and v this indicates the total weight of the liquid displaced by the core and rho c and we see this is the rho is the, um, the density of the liquid metal and then this weight of the core this is the v g into rho here the rho c and that this is the weight of the this thing liquid metal and this is weight of the uh, liquid metal and this is weight of the core so therefore 
the net difference of these things it indicates basically is equivalent to the binds reports which is subject to, which is need to uh, which is applied to the to the core uh, within the mold cavity we can look into one particular uh, problem to understand the this bind support associated with the core one is that for example uh, the sand casting we try to do the sand casting hollow part the cylindrical core is basically uh, is used of the height 200 millimeter and radius equal to 70 millimeter each place inside the mold cavity so the dimension of the core is given now density of the core material also given and the lead r this one and this two different this uh, uh, made of lead basically and made of lead that it is having the density are and uh, density of the core and density of the liquid metal both are given so therefore what is the total net force acting just try to lift lift uh, core during the pouring of the molten metal so what can be the lift force is acting on the core during the uh, pouring of the liquid metal onto the mold cavity so it is basically is a net uh, buoyancy force is acting on the core which is equivalent to the here the lift force that will try to lift the core when the liquid molten metal is poured into the mold cavity we can simply calculate the we this the height of the cylinder is given and the radius of the cylinder is given so we can easily calculate what is the volume of the cylinder so that means volume of the core and density of the core material also given 1700 kg per meter cube and density of the lead that is the this is the liquid metal density and this is the density of the core material both are given so therefore what the total act, net act force acting on the core is basically the uh, density between these two g into this is indicate this is the volume volume of the core pi r square into h so if we put all these values we can getting the 320.15 newton is basically the net buoyancy force is acting on the uh, on the core or lift force is acting on the core so we have to design in such a way that core will be able to sustain this particular force so this is the simple calculation we uh, understand to design the core uh, during the the sand mold uh, casting process now other aspect is the riser so apart from the core there is the other casting process that is the riser a riser is also uh, another important part of the any casting process that we have already discussed now we understand the riser is actually act as a like a reservoir so just to compensate the the shrinkage volume during the uh, during the solidification and, and therefore we accordingly um, the riser can be designed it means that riser we can take in such a way that actually riser only just fed very small quantity of the liquid metal to the mold cavity and which is basically sinkage volume of the the liquid metal during the solidification process so therefore the riser is not actually part of the the component what we are uh, try to uh, we are intending to produce that com component so we can consider riser is basically wastage of the material in a, in a casting process so therefore but at the same time it is also required just to compensate the liquid volume at the end stage of the uh, solidification process so therefore the volume should be as minimum as possible so that we can we can avoid the wastage of the material uh, not only wastage of the material because we need some spend some amount of the energy to melt the to keep on the melting of the liquid metal available for the riser so therefore we have to take as minimum as possible of the you know, volume uh, for the design of the riser so in other cases also now the solidification time is another but solidification time is the basically depending upon the how effectively heat is released uh, from the uh, component so in that case the solidification time the surface area is much more so heat loss will be much more so therefore solidification time we can say it actually depends on the volume by uh, area ratio so therefore the volume is basically is analogous to the heat content and the area is analogous to the heat loss so or i can say the rate of the heat dissipation and uh, through the uh, surface so therefore is as minimum in that cases if we try to avoid this thing that uh, heat because for the perspective of the riser is to minimize the heat loss so such that this the riser should solidify after solidification of the mold cavity so therefore in that cases the solidification since the the solidification we can keep the long solidification time uh, for the riser so therefore in that cases we need to minimize the minimum surface area is required so as minimum as possible the surface area for the riser is required that is the uh, in the perspective of the design of the riser so in that case we can say that 
minimum area by volume ratio is desirable in case for riser design. So, in that perspective, we can show the different kind of the, the design or we can analyze from the perspective of this thing such that we, we try to follow the minimum A by volume ratio in, in case of the designing the riser. Now, you see usual in the in uh, very uh, thumb rule kind of things we can say that volume of the riser is usually get the equal to th three times of the sinkage volume of the uh, of the casting. So, therefore, if you see the typical pattern of the volume shrinkage in a riser. So, suppose it is cylindrical riser and the volume shrinkage is basically the sinkage will occur in this way. So, supply for the riser. So, uh, for the riser. So, therefore, we can divide this thing that if this is the shrinkage volume which is supplied to the casting. So, this shrinkage volume if you see this is typical shape the, this shrinkage volume is basically uh, other particular the uh, but we have to count this is the typical pattern after shrinkage of the the liquid uh, shrinkage of the volume or after sup supply of the liquid liquid metal to the casting. So, it takes this particular shape. So, here you can approximately we can say in that case is the volume of the riser, the volume of the riser should be actually three times of the shrinkage volume of the casting. So, if it is the total volume, we can say this is the one, two and three are equal parts. So, therefore, the volume of the riser is basically the shrinkage volume of the uh, casting, almost three times of the shrinkage of the volume. So, the, in that case, this is the thumb rule, the volume of the riser should be greater than equal to three, in, 3 times of the sinkage volume of the casting, 3 into BSC. So, therefore, BSC is basically percentage of the sinkage into 100 into the volume of casting. We can calculate what is the sinkage volume. Sinkage volume for a particular material sinkage volume are different. So, we can casting the sinkage volume in terms of the volume of the casting. Now, here we understand that for the designing of the riser, the heat transfer from the riser should be as minimum as possible. So, in that cases, we can say the different check the different geometric shape of the riser. For example, we can compare regular geometric shape, say cubic shape, sphere shape and the cylindrical shape. Now, in the, all these cases, for the same amount of the volume between the cube, cube structure, sphere and cylinder structure. For the same volume, if we compare the surface area uh, between these two, the cube, sphere and the cylinder assuming that having the all are having the same volume and surface area is the same and assuming the diameter is equal to the height of the cylinder. So, from that perspective, we can say their ratio or the volume should be 1 is to 0 0.724 into 0 0.886, their volume, volume ratio will be like that. Now, if the surface area is the same, all these three cases. Now, if you see that uh, in, in this case, the sphere is having the this uh, the minimum volume. So, in that cases, although the surface area is the same between these three geometric shape, the minimum volume of the sphere is there. So, it is basically advisable to make the riser uh, because uh, the, the having the minimum volume because minimum volume means the minimum wastage of the material will be there. So, therefore, sphere can be chosen, but problem is the uh, the sphere is that it is a making the practically the manufacturing of the spherical shape of the riser is actually difficult and that is why the next choice for the geometric shape of the riser is the basically you see the cylinder because cylinder is the next uh, minimum amount of the volume as compared to the uh, cube cubic shape. So, in that sense, that we can consider the cylindrical riser is uh, the most of the cases because it is having the minimum volume or the less volume as compared to the cubic structure. Uh, although surface area is the same, but volume is the less in case of the cylindrical riser. So, here we can that is why we try to follow the cylindrical riser and uh, further and we try to uh, understand if the uh, cylindrical riser is uh, manufactured, what can be the ratio of the, the what can be the dimension of the cylinder in, in this particular case that will try to analyze this thing. Now, there is a two perspective one is the top cylindrical riser another is the side cylindrical riser. So, we can place the riser on the top of the cast. So, this is the mold cavity on the top of the mold we can put the riser. So, here the effective surface area which is responsible for the losing of the heat is that uh, in, in, in case of the top cylindrical riser is the, the side surface and one of the top surface, but not this surface directly connected to the mold. We do not count this particular surface which is responsible for losing of the heat. So, therefore, in this cases we can say the total surface area is basically pi dh and the one, one of the top surface that is the top surface is the pi by 4 d square but we do not count to the bottom surface because it is in a direct contact with the mold cavity. 
Now, total volume is that V equal to you know pi by 4 d square into h in case of the this is the formula for the cylindrical volume. Uh, from here, you can say h equal to in terms of the 4 V by pi d square. Now, we can keep the pi d h. So, h we replace the height in terms of the the other parameter volume and the diameter. Finally, you reach this is the sur total surface area equal to 4 V by d plus pi by 4 into d square. So, here this is the surface area. So, we can see that the when the uh, try to the, the minimization of the surface area that means as minimum as possible then the heat loss will be less. So, we can do the minimum surface area uh, basically it is true for the minimum heat transfer. So, the with respect to d variable d we can we can get it uh, this thing d a s by d d equal to 0. Uh, from there uh, we can say that we reach h equal to uh, d by 2. But of course, in this cases we calculate the volume remains the uh, constant volume is not variable here. So, we see that we can see the top cylindrical riser is basically the age the dimension of the height should be the equal to the radius or it is a d by 2. Similar exercise you can perform in case of the side cylindrical riser, but difference is that in side cylindrical riser all the surfaces are the heat transfer area. So, therefore, we can count the total surface area equal pi dh plus 2 into pi by 4 into d square. This is the, the top surface include plus bottom surface and because it is the nature of the uh, type of the riser because it is the, the side cylindrical riser. So, all surfaces are responsible for losing of the heat uh, in this case. So, we count total surface area as this one the similar we re relate is the heat uh, height in terms of the volume and the diameter we put it and we will get this expression and we can say that for minimum surface area d a s by d d equal to 0 from there we can find out h equal to d. So, we can see that the in case of the side cylindrical riser so height it should be equal to the diameter. So, simply by minimizing the surface area so basically by minimizing the heat loss we can design the riser in such a way that if it is the uh, top cylindrical riser then h equal to top cylindrical riser h equal to d by 2, but side cylindrical riser h equal to d. This is the typical dimension or design of the riser depending upon the nature of the uh, riser whether it is top cylindrical riser or, or there is the bottom the side cylindrical riser. Now, we, when you try to design the riser, okay, we understand that uh, when you compare between the cube and uh, sphere and the cylinder, we can simply logically we can understand that the most uh, effective riser is the uh, cylindrical riser and in this case as compared to the cubic riser because cylindrical riser the this uh, loss of the heat will be in this case as would be minimum the uh, or, or I can say that if the area is the same the same area for the same area the volume of the cylindrical riser is less as compared to the cube that is why we have chosen the cylindrical riser. Now, among the cylindrical riser when you try to choose the dimension the what should be the height and what should be the diameter. So, in that case we understand uh, that just we get this conclusion what could be the relation between the h and d. We just simply minimize the surface area just such that there will be the heat loss will be the minimum. So, from that perspective we can get the different relation between the h and the that mean height and the uh, diameter of the cylinder. Now, once establish the cylindrical riser then we try to check the in practical the adequacy of the uh, size of the uh, casting uh, size of the riser for casting we can use usually the Keynes method we can use it. It is based on the relationship between the cooling rate is linearly proportional to the ratio of the surface area and volume. We see that here are counting that cooling rate is basically cooling rate it depends on the, the surface area and the uh, ratio of the surface area and volume. So, therefore, we can we can estimate the freezing ratio the area by volume of a casting that means the cast component the what is the area by volume in practical and area by volume ratio in case of the riser. So, in case of the A by V calculation for the casting A by V for the riser if we calculate it and that ratio indicate the freezing ratio and volume ratio is simply indicates the Y is basically V R by V C. So, volume of the riser divided by the volume of the casting and based on that we can plot it because in practical the geometric shape of the 
the cast volume can be different. So we can make we can calculate what is the total area by volume ratio of a uh, of the uh, cast component and what is the area by volume ratio of the riser. And based on that, uh, we can see we can find out this thing and we can get the several uh, create the several data point. And because here you can see the volume ratio of the along the y axis and x axis is the uh, freezing ratio. So, freezing ratio x axis and y axis represents the volume ratio and we, we relate between these two that uh, so many data points uh, the this x and y value and from there you see this this can be the curve. So, this can be the curve and this functional relation represents this kind of the equation equation raising the curve x x equal to a by y minus b plus c. So, this is the relation where a is the freezing constant of the material and b is the contraction ratio from the liquid to solid and c is basically constant it depends on the medium around the riser and the casting. So, what kind of the medium we can use the it can be sand or composition of sand can be different and uh, like that. So, therefore, medium surrounding this thing it is the if it is a sand uh, the media is the same and it is equal to 1 if the media is the same around the riser and cast. So, riser and cast is the same medium we can realize then it can be c can be equal to the 1. But anyway we create the data point by calculating simply the x and y and if we fit it we get this kind of the relation. So, the other side it represents the very sound casting if it is the x by y value in such way that is less than this value this particular curve then it is indicate the defective casting process. So, this way we can go through the some practical design of the uh, casting process this case. So, this is one aspect and other cases we can give the novel research method. Novel research method we can for a very complex geometry sometimes it is very difficult to calculate the A by V ratio for the casting which is very very tedious task to calculate A by V ratio for the casting process if the structure is very very complex. In this cases what we can do we can estimate the shape factor. Shape factor means the where is the L plus W by 2 L is the is the maximum length W is the width of the component and T is the thickness of the casting. So, based on the length, width and thickness we can estimate the shape factor and then we can plot the data in terms of the x axis as a shape factor and y axis as a volume ratio. Volume ratio and the shape factor we can put it and we can say we can distinguish uh, using particular curve that one side it is the sound casting we can make some boundary it is a sound casting other way it is the defective casting. So, this simple way just casting it we can design uh, of the, uh, of the uh, casting process. Now, once you understand that uh, we see if you remember here we just I told you one point here that here cooling rate is linearly proportional to the ratio of the surface area and volume. So, we are assuming the linear, but we do not know exactly in practical process we do not know whether it is linear or it can vary in the other way or how much time it is like it is may it we it is understood that it depends on the volume and area of the of the cast component. But how it depends the what is the mathematical relationship of the solidification time to the volume by area ratio that will try to explain uh, here. So, this is called the rate of the solidification uh, in this case we can term 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 is the rate of the solidification or I can say that it is the solidification time depends on the volume by area ratio that we understood the solidification depends on the volume by area ratio because volume indicates the heat content and the area is basically heat dissipation is directly related to the surface area. So, therefore, total solidification time it depends on the volume by area ratio. And now, here we see in the actual casting process where you see there are so many components thermal component is associated with the with the casting process. So, when you pour the liquid metal into the mold cavity. So, liquid metal the adjacent to the liquid metal try to solidify. Now, here the solidification occurs and then it is there is a mold wall. So, this is the thickness of the mold and outside there is a atmosphere. Now, the mode of the heat transfer you can see that uh, there is a some uh, met the temperature drop from the center of the liquid metal to the when it will solidify this part. From solidify uh, the solidification uh, when the solidify uh, metal and at the interface between the mold and the solidified metal this it is basically associated with some sort of the contact resistance. So, here also some temperature drops and occurs at the mold metal interface. So, it basically it creates some kind of the thermal resistance between the mold and the solid uh, uh, solidified cast component mold wall are these things. Now, some temperature drops would occurs 
uh, across the mold wall. So, some temperature drop here you can see this is the, because there is just some thermal resistance actually occurs because of the thickness of the mold wall. Now, it is mold wall and away from this thing here there is some convective heat loss from the mold wall to the outside atmosphere. So, here also you can get some kind of the temperature difference or I can say convective heat transfer occurs. So, in other way it will create some kind of the contact resistance or thermal resistance associated with the, the between the mold and the air. So, this way we can see there are so many thermal resistance components usually there are five different thermal resistance components is actually associated in the with the when you any kind of the, the sand mold casting process. But in this case this contract resistance and the which resistance dominates it actually depends on the type of the casting process. So, here we try to discuss in the two different type of the casting process which is most widely used and we can see which thermal resistance components actually dominates in this particular uh, casting process. One is the very large casting. So, large casting uh, in an insulated mold is basically sand casting or the investment casting. So, on sand and investment casting here thermal resistance mainly offered by the mold wall. So, maximum thermal resistance is offered by the mold. So, here you can consider these are the dominating thermal resistance. So, I say the the heat transfer is basically assuming the thermal resistance in the mold wall and based on that we can estimate what is the solidification time. So, in this case, so which is specifically true in case of the sand casting or investment casting process. So, we are assuming only this is the thermal resistance components and we are neglecting the thermal other thermal resistance components and based on that we can reach that solidification time it depends on the omega into volume by area square. So, I am not going into the derivation of this thing, but rather we can directly write this equation. The, in this case, particular case solidification depends on the volume by area square of that. So, where omega equal to is basically the volume by uh, this modulus of uh, sorry m equal to modulus of casting process and the omega is the solidification factor and this solidification factor is depends on the properties of the mold material and properties of the cast material and what is the here you can see that the freezing temperature of the metal, the original or initial mold temperature of the metal, thermal diffusivity of the mold material, T time, thermal conductivity of the mold and cross section of the mold metal uh, interface. So, here you can see all these parameters are gear alpha and all these things gear uh, are given mold material all these things, but uh, specific it and the, the some parameters is also associated with the with the uh, the properties of the the cast material. So, therefore, the combining these two we can estimate the uh, the solidification factor it is basically more or less all the material properties and what is the the temperature also peak temperature, freezing temperature and the initial temperature. Okay. So, this thing but ultimately the solidification time is basically proportional to the volume by area square of that and that is true in case of the sand mold casting process. So, in this case we see the dominating thermal resistance on the mold material. There is another cases uh, of course, in this case also uh, we already discussed that uh, during the mold there might be some shrinkage will occurs during the, the casting process and which is more uh, basically significant in case of the sand mold casting process. And here you get some understanding the materials and their, their contraction ratio when there is a change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. So, therefore, for aluminum we can see the maximum contraction occurs. So, when aluminum liquid aluminum converted to the solid we can expect the 7.1 percentage of the shrinkage from liquid phase to the solid phase when it is converting. That is why if the 100 ml aluminum when it is converted to the solid is basically the solidification shrinkage the contraction 7.1 percent. So, we can say that 92.9 ml will be aluminum when it is solidified. So, therefore, there is a shortage of the volume of the this 7.1 ml uh, liquid aluminum will be the contraction the shrinkage will occurs and that shrinkage volume will be the 7.1 ml of the aluminum and that actually occurs during the solidification process. So, therefore, here this shrinkage 7.1 ml aluminum that uh, that is supplied by the, uh, the riser. So, from the what are the liquid metals available in the riser that riser is supplied the this this shrinkage volume associated during of the transformation from liquid phase to solid phase or during the solidification of the material. So, here you see the the start indicates the different material 
these are the shrinkage volume uh, we can see but uh, if you see the gray cast iron it is having the shrinkage volume minus 1.8 it means that when it is changing the phase from liquid phase to solid phase it actually not shrink it actually expand so that is why I have put it is the minus the negative sign in this particular case. So, based on that we can design the riser just looking at understanding of the what amount of the shrinkage volume is associated with the uh, particular material. Now, I come to this point the other point what is the the talking about the solidification time. So, now this is the another second case the how to estimate the solidification time in case of the that uh, permanent mold casting and the die casting process. So, permanent mold casting or die casting process in this case the rate of the solidification or the solidification time depends on the volume by area ratio. So, here the it is different from the sand mold casting process. So, here you can see that heat flow is basically controlled by the thermal resistance in the mold metal interface. So, mold metal interface the maximum thermal resistance is uh, offered by the mold metal interface. So, that is why this is the and based on that if we consider the only the the heat flow or uh, the this uh, the heat contact resistance between the mold and met, uh, liquid metal interface what is the maximum amount of the, the heat flow occurs at this interface and in this case this solidification time or rate of the solidification it depends on the volume by area ratio volume by area ratio depends on this ratio the solidification time. Now, we can calculate also uh, where h f the heat transfer coefficient of the interface is the surface area is the l is the latent heat we can see these are the parameters the rho m is the I think density of the liquid metal l is the latent heat of the liquid metal h f is the heat transfer coefficient and t f and t 0 are the this uh, freezing temperature and the initial room temperature this thing. So, this expression is basically used to estimate the solidification time for very thin section cast we cast is done which is heavy metal uh, or uh, heavy metal such as the die and permanent mold casting because die and permanent mold casting process the mold metal is basically made of the uh, metallic part and that is the the thickness is very, um, very high in this cases. But when we produce the cast component the cast component volume or size or thickness are actually very small. So, in this particular situation the basically the solidification time depends only on the volume by area ratio. So, in that cases two different types of the casting process we can see the solidification time depends on the one cases it depends on the volume by square of the volume by area ratio and other cases it depends only on the volume by uh, area ratio. So, these two are aspects associated with the casting process. Now, here you can see example also. Now, I see that two components are being cast of the same volume, but different shape, shape are different. One is the sphere for example and another is the cube. Which component will solidify faster? So, that we can see simply we see the solidification time in this case uh, solidification time uh, assuming that depends on the volume by area uh, square here in case of the sand mold casting process. Now, if the volume is the same then it depends only on the T s is proportional to the 1 by s square. So, we can say that T s is basically uh, k by s square we can say we can say like that k is a some constant of proportionality. Now, for sphere we can see the for sphere volume equal to same volume 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, r is basically 3 by 4 pi. So, r equal to here uh, 3 by 4 pi if we assume the unit volume volume equal to 1 unit volume. So, we can get the r, r values is this one. Now, what is the surface area of this sphere surface area equal to 4 pi r square. So, you can get the r some value the it is if you calculate it you will getting 4.84. Now, solidification time equal to k by s square. So, k is a constant. So, we can put the a equal to this one uh, s square equal to 4.84 square. So, k by this one we are getting 0 0.042 k. So, this is for the solidification time for the sphere. Similarly, we can calculate for the cube also. Here you can see the uh, v equal to a cube. So, for the cube now v equal to 1. So, already volume equal to 1 unit. So, therefore, a equal to 1 we can say that and area equal to 6 s square equal to 6. So, solidification time k by s square we can put a equal to 6. So, 0 0.027 k we see the 0 0.042 k another case is 0 0.027 k. So, solidification time for cubic it takes the the less time the cube is less time than that of the the sphere we can see the solidification time is much more the cube becomes more faster the less time it takes for to solidify as compared to the the sphere. So, this is the 
in case of the cost volume. But if we compare the uh, in case of the riser, if you take the if you take the design of the riser from the now uh, this discussion is based on the casting process, cast volume, the with the component size basically. Now if we discuss the same point in the from the perspective of the riser, so we can say that if it is a riser made of the sphere, same volume, it takes this much of time to solidify. That means to change the phase, but this take cube takes the less time, but sphere takes the uh, more time. But when you try to design in, in the perspective of the riser, we should choose the sphere, not the cube process because sphere can take much more time as compared to the cube and our objective to choose the riser is that that it takes longer solidification time such that it will be able to the supply the liquid metal at the end of the, uh, the casting process. So that is why from the riser perspective the, uh, the sphere uh, is the better option as compared to the cube and that we have already discussed from the uh, riser uh, perspective that when you try to design the riser we can take the uh, spherical shape is better then uh, as compared to the cube shape although their volume is the same but surface area are different. So, surface area are different in, in such a way the sphere takes much more time that is why riser should be made of the sphere not the form of a cube. So, from this example we can understand the, the, the basic understanding of the design perspective of the cast volume and the design perspective of the riser volume. Now, based on all this understanding, there are so many different special type of the casting process have been developed. I, I am mentioning the few here, maybe the some special type of the casting process, one is the cell mold casting, investment casting process, permanent mold casting process, then die casting, die casting also two different types of the die casting, hot chamber die casting, cold chamber die casting, then centrifugal casting. So, horizontal centrifugal, vertical, semi centrifugal, centrifugic, these are the different types of the centrifugal casting. Even that there is a dry sand molding also, slash casting, squeeze casting process, single crystal casting, pressure casting process. Though, so, we can see that based on this understanding on this thing, there are so many different types of the casting process has been developed, but we will discuss all the different types of the, the casting process probably in the next module. So, this module I just uh, try to design just to get an overview of the uh, casting process. So, I think that is all. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.